With the end of Moore's law and the advent of advanced packaging, massive investments are needed to continue getting improvements in performance and efficiency in semiconductors. And someone has to foot the bill. Someone as in you and I. As you're about to see, the rising cost of chips is not temporary, but a trend that's here to stay. This video is sponsored by UCDKeys.com. UCD Keys have a great offer at the moment with Windows 11 keys for just $25. Windows 10 Pro Keys for just $16, Office 2021 Pro Plus for $49.90 for a lifetime key. I've used this service myself and the keys work great and are sent to your email super quickly. The keys also work globally. You can get an additional discount of 20% on all offers by using the coupon code C30 at checkout. So that brings Windows 11 Pro, for instance, down to just $17.50. Get your key Keys safely at ucdkeys.com. Links in the description. The big game changer that we will be seeing next year and beyond is the gate all around transistor, or GAA, particularly at 3 nanometer and below. Even though gate all around is an evolutionary step from FinFats, their impact on the design flows and the tools will be significant, with serious implications in our ability to access the latest and greatest CPUs and GPUs. But let's get to the good news first. With gate all around transistors, some of the limitations of FinFats FinFETs will be gone, with a wider channel, more electrons will be able to flow, and devices can therefore operate faster. In other words, chips will continue to see improvements. In fact, performance is expected to improve by 25% with gate all around, with power consumption reduced by 50%. The bad news is that the complexity of building gate all around transistors will increase significantly compared to FinFETs, and the investments needed, especially when it comes to the use of UV machines will be tremendous. At 3 nanometer and 2 nanometer, the proportion of the EUV layer is going to double compared to 5 nanometer. And beyond 2 nanometer, we will see the introduction of EUV high numerical aperture, with each high NA scanner costing roughly $320 million. For reference, the current EUV machines cost $140 million each, so that's almost a 130% increase increasing cost for the new generation of EUV machines. TSMC, Samsung and Intel will be purchasing multiples of these and guess who they will pass the costs on to? You and I, the end customers. The cost of chips will only continue to rise because it has to if continued improvements are to be had. Next gen EUV machines will only add to the already escalating costs of shrinking transistors. And while advanced packaging will guarantee performance and efficiency improvements, it doesn't fix the economic problem, quite the opposite, it only makes it worse. Also of note, with gate all around, chiplets will become the norm, both because of cost and because of the decreasing supply and threshold voltages, where the gate all around part is responsible for the digital part and the input and output will remain on older technology nodes. In other words, at 3 nanometer and below, chiplet based CPUs and GPUs will become commonplace. AMD has just extended their agreement with Global Foundries, and you can expect their system in package products to feature the latest nodes for the logic and the lagging edge for control dies, IO dies, etc. And surprisingly, perhaps for the first time in history, demand for the lagging edge like Global Foundries 12 nanometer is increasing. Sectors like automotive and IoT are looking for older process nodes for their chips, driving these older nodes up in terms of cost. So if AMD, for instance, moves a future Zen product to 3 nanometer TSMC, along with Global Foundry's 12 nanometer for the IO die, all of the components will be more expensive, even the lagging edge ones. And you can bet that chip makers will be passing these rising costs on to customers. For this reason, CPUs and GPUs and memory will only be getting more and more expensive at each segment. Another way to look at this is that the value that you used to get for 300 
$100 will now cost you $600 or more. Or to get the value that a GPU gave you at $150, you will need to spend $300 to $400. And this is a trend that will only get worse over time. By 2025, you might have to spend $1,000 for what would otherwise be considered a mid-range product, like a 60-class GPU. So the question becomes, what are your options? Should you just quit the PC enthusiast hobby, turn to consoles instead, maybe? I think we're not quite there yet. It seems to be that we are on the verge of a major leap in graphics that will require new powerful hardware. In case you missed it, a few weeks ago I released a video discussing the future of graphics, and recently Epic released an Unreal Engine 5 demo for the Matrix Resurrections movie tie-in called Matrix Awakens that showcases some of the graphical improvements that we can expect in upcoming games. But these improvements will come at a cost, at least if you want to run them natively at 60 frames per second. You will need faster hardware. The current chip shortages and the consequent difficult access to new products are expected to continue next year. Yet, I think it will be wise to do everything you can to upgrade your PC hardware in 2022, especially your GPU. I know that goes against the general mood, and I know people are angry at miners, frustrated with shortages, and generally have a negative outlook towards our hobby. But if there was ever a time to upgrade, assuming what we're hearing about next-gen hardware is true, I think now is the time. Or rather, when the next-gen hardware actually comes out, which should be around Q3 next year. I think a Tier 2 or even Tier 3 GPU from NVIDIA or AMD next year will give you some assurance of being able to enjoy this new upcoming generation of graphics in games, while still being within reach price-wise. I think starting 23 and beyond, for GPUs in particular, the value equation will completely go down the drain. From that point on, I think we will be faced with three options. Either buy to bullet and accept that we have to spend thousands of dollars to stay on the bleeding edge on the PC, or use a service like Stadia or GeForce Now to stream games using commodity hardware, or hopefully upscaling technologies like DLSS, XCSS, and FSR mature to the point where we can't tell the difference between native and upscaled. And those seem to be the only paths ahead for our niche, and none of them is ideal. The PC enthusiast niche as we know it is about to end, and you better prepare for that. For the reason as I explain regarding node complexity and costs, I think 2022 will be a swan song for the PC enthusiast hobby. So to conclude, tools for semiconductor manufacturing are becoming exponentially more expensive. Moore's Law's economic benefit is disappearing, even if performance and efficiency continue to improve. And even the lagging edge will now see record demand. So all of these factors combined will lead to a continued trend of increased prices for PC components, particularly CPUs, GPUs, and memory. This is a new reality that we will all need to adjust to, and we will need to evaluate our options if we want to continue enjoying all that a PC platform provides. And speaking of the future, I will be covering the main CES 2022 announcements in the coming weeks, so make sure you are subscribed and turn notifications on. This video was made possible by my awesome patrons. With YouTube revenue decreasing rapidly, it's up to you guys to support small channels like mine, and your support on Patreon is crucial to keep it going. Consider supporting me on Patreon for just $1 per month and get exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server, where you can talk to me directly and be a part of a welcoming community of enthusiasts. So join my Patreon today. Thanks for watching, and until the next one. Thank you.